Sunset Canyon and Lost Canyon can be two of the most frustrating game modes in Rise of Kingdoms. And honestly, the reasons why you win and lose are not always obvious. In fact, usually it's not obvious. So in this video, I'm going to give you everything you need to know about how to play Canyon and win more. This includes attack formations, defense formation, commander pairings, and much more. So stick around in this video for everything you need to know to get more wins in Canyon. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and being a content creator has made me a target for a non-trivial number of attacks, both in Sunset Canyon, but especially in Lost Canyon. When you are battling against other kingdoms and you have many other kingdoms now attacking you, hooray! So in this game mode, I'm going to talk about the following factors that can help you be more successful on your journey. And certainly, knowing these things has profoundly imp improved my ability to climb rank here. So what are these factors? It includes positioning. It includes your march combinations. It includes your equipment. It includes your talents. Now, I will cover equipment and talents very briefly at the end. But the majority of this video, I want to focus on those first two things positioning, and then also the march combinations, because positioning costs you actually nothing, and you can just start getting better results. So that's where we're going to start. And if you want to jump to any part of this video, you can use the timestamps that are in the description. And by the way, if you're interested in this topic of Canyon and other things to help you win in Rise of Kingdoms, please do consider throwing a like on here and subscribing. I'm giving away my secrets for Canyon, and I'm only going to lose more for doing so. So do me a favor. If you would all find this video helpful, throw a like on here, consider subscribing, or even just share it with a friend. Let's start with positioning. Positioning is the thing that costs you literally nothing to start getting better results, and I think we should start with your defensive formations. There are really only two defensive formations. There is a bottom formation, and then there is a top formation. The top formation would be if I put my stack of marches like so. Now, the thing that I want to talk about here with regard to your position, should you focus on the top or the bottom, is that it depends on where you want your back row marches to go. You see, all the front row marches are going to charge at the enemy head on. But your back row, when you defend, they will angle upwards. And when you attack, they will angle down. This really matters a lot for whether or not you have a bottom configuration or a top configuration. And the reason is as follows. You want to control where your area of effect damage is going. So it's not a coincidence that I have aligned with a bottom formation. And I'll just reset to show this to you. I have a bottom formation because I have two area of effect commanders I really want to work. I want them to hit multiple targets. The first is that I'm using William. Now, William has a very narrow rectangle area of effect. So when these marches charge forward, I want to throw this into the enemy's stack of marches and hit two things. Ideally, it will be their E-Song. And there's a lot of benefits for that without getting into the skills that William has and how he removes skill damage from the enemy. The other march that I have that does area of effect damage is Esong. I currently have him hiding behind Nebu. We'll talk more about these combos later. But I have this bottom formation because not only is my William going to angle up and hit the enemy and get multiple targets, most likely, but I also am going to have my Esong angle up and protect whatever is hitting my Nevsky. I'm going to do area of effect damage onto that too. That's why I have this configuration. The alternate con configuration here would not work the same way for me. If I flip it around this way, remember, when you stack up, I'm going to angle up when I defend. Defense angles up, which means I can't protect my offlane march with my Esong in the same way that I could with the bottom configuration. In this way, I can sort of protect it, which is pretty cool. Now, there's more you need to know about this defensive position, and I'll talk more about these roles specifically for the offlane, the DPS, and the tanks. But you want your march that is closest to your offlane. So here's the offlane. Here's the march that's closest to the offlane. This march should be your most tanky march. Why is that? The reason 
is that if your enemy stacks all four marches against you up here and then puts one down here, you want to have your most tanky thing be up top so that it takes the brunt of the force. And as it turns out, my Guan Constantine, and for many of you, that's going to sound like a weird combo. Don't use this in the open field, okay? <laughs> Trust me. Don't use this in the open field. But that Guan Constantine is the more tanky of my combos, weirdly enough. More tanky even than my Trajan Mulan. So that's why I've got this set up exactly how I have it. It's very precise. You could put your off lane over here, or here, or here. But I don't like these three positions in most cases. There's a very specific reason for that. If you position down here, you make yourself more vulnerable to getting stacked 4v1. What do I mean by that? And I'll talk about that 4v1 formation a little bit later. But if you put your uh, off lane here, that means the enemy can have their most tanky marches lined up really nicely and their weakest high damage marches behind them. And you have to basically go in order through the enemy's most tanky marches, whereas they do not have to do the same to you. They will attack your offlane, then they'll attack your Guan, but then they get your really squishy high damage march that's behind your Guan. That's not good. If you go up here, you force the enemy to make a choice. Either they're going to put a more tanky march to line up against this if they try to stack up against you, which means you don't have to go through as many tanky marches once the 4v4 happens. Um, that is way preferable if they do that. Or, I mean, if they don't do that, you're doing a lot of damage to one of their damage marches. Even better. So this is a very, very purposeful defensive configuration. And I should hope that after explaining all of this in depth, you too can make a really important or strong defensive configuration. Again, the way I think about this, right? I think for me, I think of the letters uh, A and D. Attack, okay, goes down. And defense, starts with a D, goes up. I don't know why that works for me, but that's how I always remember. It's like opposite of what you think. Attack, goes down. Defense, goes up. That works for me as my mnemonic device, sort of. Okay, one last thing that you almost certainly noticed right away, and maybe I should have talked about first, is this siege unit I have in my Guan Yu march. This is here specifically to anchor. By anchor, I mean siege units march very slowly. It is there to make my Guan march go very slowly. Theoretically, and I suppose I should confirm this, probably should have confirmed it before making this video, but I'm pretty sure that when that siege unit dies, that march will act as if, in fact, I'm sure that this works this way, uh, the march will act as if it is all infantry units. So it's here to make it so that when my troops move in, my area of effect damage with my XY and William and also my Esong, it all lines up really nicely. So that's what that is designed to do. You can control the speed of a march slowing it down by virtue of using a siege unit. And that is really, really valuable when you use a commander that has to have their damage line up in order to be effective for their AoE. Now, you could make a combo that avoids doing that entirely, but let's actually get now to the attack formations. And there are more attack formations, as I uh, already am getting attacked here. There are more attack formations than defense formations. So let's go now and show you a couple attack formations. Uh, I won't actually use all of them against this number one team. He will almost certainly beat me, he or she, or however they identify. So let's talk about attack formations, and there are several. Uh, the first is what I call laning up. This is also a fair fight. It's a fair fight because you are lining up exactly against the defense in lane. So by that, I mean you would basically run it a mirror of what they're doing. And for me, remember, attack goes down, defense goes up. So I want to have my Nebu down here, and I really want my William to swing down and get his AoE to connect. So this would be an example of laning up for a fair fight. This lane up strategy works best if you think you have better equipment. If you think you have better commanders, then you're more likely to get that victorious outcome from a lane up strategy. Keep in mind that in this instance, I'm playing into what he wants here. He's going to have his Esong swing up. Defense goes up. And so my off lane is going to getting it's going to get freaking wrecked by area of effect damage. It's actually pretty problematic uh, for my off lane. My off lane will almost certainly lose because of that. And so 
Laning up may not be the best strategy in this case. Another strategy will be called stacking up uh, or a 4v1. I was describing this earlier. A 4v1 is when you line up sort of like so. Uh, and what you try to do is crush their off lane really quickly. In this case, it's the Alexander with the uh, Honda. And then you end up in a 4v4 fight. Like you're going to kill their off lane about the same time they kill your off lane. But you can line things up here so that you're stacking all this damage onto their sort of main tanky march. So hopefully you can kill it quickly. Uh, and then you can take out the march that's behind it. You could also set your damage on the off lane. Or I guess the outside lane, I should say. But the problem with setting your damage on this outside lane is that like you're going to have to chew through a basically full health tank by the time your four stack goes onto their four stack. So this, this formation works well if you think your area of effect damage is going to outweigh theirs. And it also works well if you think you can line up your more tanky marches like so. Um, and the problem here is that I'm going to have a really high damage march take a lot of damage by ultimately tanking against this Nevsky Honda. So that's the 4v1 lineup. The final attack formation I want to talk about is what I'll call a split tank or a 3-1-1. And I call it those things, split tank and 3-1-1, because you're splitting your tanks off to the side and you have three marches stacking onto their off lane, right? 3-1-1. The reason that this works is that you basically make it so that the unbelievably powerful effect from William or other area of effect damage dealers do not come into play. What do I mean by that? William, for example, has to hit two or more targets in order to start giving 50 rage per second to all his allies and also 20% uh, defense. But if I line up like this, William can only hit one target. He's not going to hit more things. And so you basically disarm some of these abilities that are super powerful. That's where a 3-1-1 attack strategy is really, really good. Uh, the only problem is that by the time uh, you chew through their offlane, your tanks could be very beat up. And the reason for that is that you don't have your backlane DPS uh, protecting your tanks. I know it sounds weird, your backlane DPS protecting your tanks, but they protect your tanks by reducing the number of troops that are over here so that your tanks are taking less damage because there's less troops to wail on them, right? So without that, your tanks are going to get really, really, really beat up. And this just is what happens. But theoretically, you yourself will bring a ridiculous amount of damage in once you take out their offlane. And so at this point, if you're weak to this sort of a strategy, and I will argue that any William team is, the thing you need to have is a really strong offlane to make it so that they have to take a fair fight. And if they take a fair fight against you, theoretically, you should win because the William is so powerful. That's the idea behind <laughs> the 3 one, one and also using a William in your lineup at all. Whew. So now that we've covered defense formations and attack formations, what combos should you even be bringing? And there's a lot that we can talk about here. I want to start by talking about the tanks, then I'll talk about off lanes, then I'll talk about DPS marches. And this, by the way, is the thing that actually takes a lot of time and energy. Uh, and by time and energy, I mean Universal Legendary commander, commander Sculptures and also equipment and investment in uh, commanders that you can't just change in a blink of an eye like your positioning, which is why I started with positioning. I also want to say that this is not really important um, compared to all the other things you will do in the game. The rewards for Canyon should not dictate you're making investments in the game. However, you might you might find Canyon so frustrating that you make investments specifically for Canyon. I would encourage you not to do that. Focus on open field, or if you're Rally or Garrison, focus on that. And when you happen to have overlap with Canyon, hooray. That also means you're going to lose a bunch of Canyon, but oh well, GG. You're always behind the meta in that instance. But let's talk now about these combos. Tank combos. I'm going to talk about tank combos because you have to have at least two tanks and one off lane. You could do a weird, like, a front row in every lane, but I've not seen that work anywhere. Like a 3-1-1 I've never seen on defense, so I'm not even going to talk about that. Uh, so your best tank pairs, like two of them together, are going to be Guan Constantine with Trajan Mulan. And you may think, Chiskul, are you the only one doing that? No. 
Nope, that's that's newish. I learned it from JST. Hey, credit where credit is due. Credit where credit is due. It's really good. I really like it. Um, here is another frontline combo: Richard Constantine and Trajan Ethel. I actually, I actually, th this is a weird one. I don't. Okay, maybe I'll just skip this one. I don't see that very frequently. Here's more of that Trajan Mulan Guan Constantine. Here is a very common combo. I used to use this extensively. It's very good. Trajan Constantine and Guan Leo. Very good combo. Higher damage than the Mulan combo, uh, but can lose in fair fights. Uh, fair fights, that's laning up. Here is another one of the Guan Constantine, Trajan, Mulan. Here we've got Guan Constantine. Uh, oh, whoa. Here we've got Trajan Constantine and Guan Honda. That's kind of interesting. Um, and I guess... One other front row configuration you could use, and I don't, I don't love it, but I've seen it, is Trajan with Constantine and then Guan with Alex. Those are some of the more frontline tanky pairs. I know there's a bunch of commanders I haven't even talked about that you definitely can use. That includes Richard I, uh, Charles Martel, Julius Caesar, Joan of Arc, especially if you're in the early game. Joan with Matilda is actually a thing. I made a dedicated video of that card up in the top. Um, and then Sepia. These are like other tanky commanders. I know those epics are more for like the early-ish game. Um, you won't see any of those commanders really at the top end. You got to use what you have though, especially if you're following my advice that you focus on field and let Canyon, you know, hopefully just uh, improve as you improve your open field marches. Those are the most tanky combos that I think work really well. As far as your off lane goes... This is where you have a lot of interesting choices, and it all depends on what equipment you have, really, and what commanders are at your disposal. I think right now, the uncontested champion of the offlane is the Nevsky with Honda Tadakatsu, and the reason is that Honda's AoE is insane. Nevsky's damage and tankiness is insane. He even gets health when he's getting attacked, so, like, more things hitting him makes him more tanky. He's honestly ridiculous. It shouldn't even be allowed. I say that only half-jokingly. Um, so Nevsky Honda is one of the best offlanes. Other cavalry offlanes include Nevsky with Minamoto. I am using that right now. The Relic on Minamoto is really good. 20% defense when paired with all the rest of the stuff that Nevsky is doing, plus the fact that Minamoto has some of the best single-target damage in the game is kind of OP. It's a very good offlane. Um, and I've also seen, weirdly enough, Saladin Takeda be a very, very tanky offlane. Uh, that offlane is not designed to kill an enemy quickly and then help the rest of the fight. This combo is actually designed to live so long that the rest of your fight resolves, and then even if you were losing in the offlane, um, by the time that the rest of the stuff sorts out, you're, you'll be victorious there and you sweep out whatever is beating you in the offlane. The Salad and Takeda, it, it's pretty decent, actually. And then also, uh, for the early game, I'm going to give a shout-out to Saladin and Joan. It's a thing you can do. You would be very surprised. It's going to work better than you would think. If you wanted to use archers in your offlane, and I did for a very, very long time, the combination that I used is Artemisia primary with uh, two secondaries. I used a Monitori secondary, and then I think the better combo, weirdly enough, was actually the Mehmed secondary. And I know that sounds weird, but in this game mode in particular, Having the extra troop capacity is super, super powerful. And so Mehmed, with his extra troop capacity, is really good. It works really well. Like just more troops is super OP in this game mode. A part of the reason why in the Cav combo I mentioned Honda is like really good. And then a few infantry combos that you can try that I have used and I'm seeing used um, includes Herald with Alex. This is a high damage combo, you're not going to survive. In fact, if they stack up against you, you're going to die. <laughs> but you do a lot of damage on your way out, and that's the entire point. The other offlane that I see in like really high level play is Richard uh, with Pakal. So Pakal primary, Richard secondary is for whatever reason fairly popular. And also Pakal with Harold is another combo that you will sometimes see. I sort of wonder why that isn't more popular for the offlane, but I think that it just kind of struggles against single target damage and thrives if they try to stack against you. So it could be a way to force a fair fight. And that's kind of reasonable if, if you think you're going to win the fair fight with a lineup. 
And in a lot of cases, you, you know, you'll find yourself up against tougher teams. The last thing I want to com uh, cover is the back row damage marches as far as march combos goes. And one combo that you see universally everywhere is an Esong combo. Like everybody brings Esong to Canyon. Everybody. Because there's so much you get from his area of effect damage. It's so powerful. With that said, the best Esong combos are Neb with Esong. Esong with Mehmed, and I've even seen, of course, Ethel with Esong in earlier gameplay. Uh, once you get to, like, a very old kingdom, that's not going to be used very much at all. Uh, the, I mean, not, not not at the top of the canyon rankings, okay? So it's a fine starting point, but at the, but at the end of the day, um, you may find more value splitting them up, especially because now Mehmed is just so good, and you can get him from gold keys over time. You can work on him. Even without his expertise, he's going to be pretty decent. Um, and I, Heck, I mean, I've been using him in Canyon for ages. Even <laughs> This is like my restart project, but I've used Minamoto Mehmed for like a very long time. The other high damage march that you'll see in top-end Canyon gameplay is going to be XY. And you either pair him with William or Nevsky, or if you needed, you could use Mehmed. The, and I know not everybody has these marches, right? What makes a good DPS march? Let me explain. It's area of effect damage. It's debuffs, and ideally also more troop capacity is really OP. Those are the factors that make a DPS march really, really good. So if you use the XY with William, you're going to want to try to line things up so that you can make sure that that hits multiple targets. If you use XY with Nevsky, which I actually really like a lot, you don't have to worry at all about the alignment, and that makes it really easy to do well. So I, there's actually a... I think a perk to using Nevsky, which is that it's always going to be good as a secondary to XY. The downside is that if your enemy can line up with a William, that might end up just being better. Those are the, the best high damage marches right now. Um, otherwise, you can use kind of whatever area of effect damage commanders you have that have debuffs, that have extra troop capacity. And on that note, let's talk very briefly about the equipment and a few optimizations that I probably could stand to make. Um, if you have your front row commanders and you want to put the best equipment possible on them, you will notice if you look at some of your reports that your front row commanders do very little damage. So take a look at this. Uh, if we look at my Mulan with Trajan, I did 10,000 damage. I did like very, very little damage here. The only march that did less damage is my offlane because presumably that got focused. I mention this because I should not have any attack stats at all on this march. It's there to survive. I want like 100% defense and health. Health preferred, by the way. On a tanky march, just don't get confused about what it's there to do. It's there to just be very, very, very tanky. Um, same is true for my Guan and Constantine over here. Theoretically, I should just ditch all attack-related items. Theoretically. And have all health stuff. Now, I haven't done that, right? Like, I don't know. Can I bring myself to use the blue health item when I have this? I guess if I wanted to win more on Canyon, I might do that. Right? Like, the tankiness is all that matters. Even though I have a freaking procced ring. Gosh darn it. I have a procced infantry ring. And I'm not even using it right now on this march. Because I think coin for the tankiness is actually that important on the Guan. And the utility of the rage generation for the silence over here is really important. But that is like a top-end optimization that most players aren't going to get to. In fact, the more common optimization, if you really wanted, is to use something like an Ancient Stratagems. This is really, really, really good in this game mode, but is, I think, less exciting in other game modes. Um, it can just lead to a higher repair bill. Especially, like, once you have a 50% expansion, I get that having more troops will be more damage, but unless you're very frequently going back to your city, uh, I, I find troop capacity to be less exciting in the open field and more exciting in game modes like Canyon, and also in Ark of Osiris, where, like, you, you can't just easily go home from a city nearby and then pop back out and fight necessarily. So that's one thing you could consider if you're thinking about, like, what accessories do I want to use, this is really good in a game mode like Canyon. I've graduated off of that at this point. 
but you might hang on to it for a little bit. And the last thing I'll just mention is talent builds. Obviously, I have dedicated guides for every single commander in the game, including canyon builds. So if you want to see a specific commander, just do a search on YouTube for Chiss School, enter the name of the commander, and it will be there. I mean, I've, I have put guides on, I think at this point, every single commander in the game. But there are talents that you can focus on, and I haven't done that because I'm fighting in GVK, and I'm not going to just keep switching talents. But theoretically, you could switch to a build that has zero emphasis on march speed and has emphasis on stats and utility. So, for example, this is my field build, which has march speed. It's got it even in the talents over here. This is a march speed manipulation effect, right? You see all this march speed going on? And then I have stats finally up here. I mean, I, to get five stat points, or I guess to get five talent points put into things that give stats, it's 2.5% of each stat, which is pretty good. I had to invest two, four, uh, then here's another four, so that's eight, plus another three. I have 11 points that are sort of waste in this build for Canyon. Total waste. So theoretically, an alternate build might perform better that doesn't have any of that waste. I think it's worth considering. If you are only concerned about Canyon, but I don't think most people are. So I mentioned that about the talents because this definitely has an influence in Canyon. 100% it does. And in fact, a part of the reason that when I pair Artemisia and Amanatori together and I use them in Canyon, a part of the reason, again, I'm using Artemisia primary and not Amanatori primary, even though she's generally considered to be better as the primary in field, is that I have a garrison build on Amanatori and an open field build on Artemisia. It's really like that simple, right? The last thing I'll do before we close out the video here is just show you what my KVK Season 3 setup looks like on my restart project. This is by no means perfect, but I think will be a lot more relatable for people that are uh, earlier in the game, even though this is still an old account and I have access to a lot of things. So let's get a look at what I've done here, and I've probably already made some interesting mistakes. In fact, I think that this particular setup, for those of you that didn't know, was set automatically when I went on offense. So if you don't set your defense every week in Sunset Canyon, then it will set your defense to be whatever you attacked with. Big whoopsie. So I actually need to fix my defensive configuration here so that that actually works the way I would intend. And I can show you that that's what I would have intended, hopefully, by looking at Lost Canyon, where that is my setup exactly. So, um, why have I configured this the way that I have? Man, I don't have the most amazing stuff to use in this particular game mode, and I haven't even been thinking about this game mode all that much on my restart, but here's what I did do. Um, for my tank, I've got Ethelfled with Joan of Arc. I want Ethelfled's AoE damage. I want Ethelfled's debuffs. Really strong. And I also obviously want Joan's buffs. So that is my tankier march of my front row that is giving me the benefit of all of those buffs and debuffs. My other tank march is, again, not optimal, but it's Alex and Sun Tzu. I say not optimal because Alex is really more of a DPS commander than a tank commander. But I have what I have, and that's what I'm using there. In my offlane, I'm using a tanky march strategy. It's just there to survive and be a punching bag. Um, if they 4v1, hopefully I do okay over here and my punching bag lives for a while. It's Charles Martel with Julius Caesar. Um, not the best, I will admit it, but it's just there to sort of tank and hang in there. And then for my DPS marches, I have Esong with Kira. And you may be thinking, don't you have some legendary you could use? Well, I already have my Mehmed deployed with Minamoto, spoiler alert. Um, so I'm using an Epic. And Kira has historically been pretty good in Canyon. You could use Kusunoki instead as an Archer Commander. I value area of effect damage so much that I'm not using El Cid. Instead, I'm using the Epic Commander that does AoE damage. I think that's pretty important to understand. Um, this is especially true because I have designed my for, uh, my sort of defense here to have Esong go up into the enemy and do lots of damage to all four of their marches that lane up against me if they choose that sort of approach. And then my Minamoto with Mepmed, that's designed to do area of effect damage um, by virtue of having Mepmed and bring more troops. I mean, money where my mouth is. I said he's really good. 
and I'm using him, and I have used him for a really long time on my restart. So hopefully this is a little bit more relatable. There might be theoretically uh, some better things I could be doing, but then I've got to move my equipment around, and I just don't particularly feel like it, and I don't have that much equipment on this account anyways because I'm pouring everything into my main marches. You get the idea here. So that is the configuration I have on my restart account. If you have any questions, de definitely let me know down below in the comments. And if you appreciated this video, again, when I share my secrets like this, I'm only going to lose in Canyon more. So GG, rip Chiskul. <laughs> but hopefully you win more. And if you, if you think you might, or you enjoyed this video, or you learned something, throw a like on here, subscribe to the channel, share this video with a friend if you found it helpful. That's like the biggest compliment you could give me. Leave a comment saying, hey, thank you. Even just that short little comment would actually... I would appreciate it. It would mean a lot to me. And until next time, you have fun smashing your enemies. And if you want to see my overall tier list for commanders, I'll have a card up in the top so you can see including all of the rankings I've given to commanders for how they perform in Canyon.